So uh, at 7.03, I will call to order the meeting of the Deerfield Planning Board with um, some technical challenges tonight, although everything looks like it's okay for those of us who can see on computer laptops, but we don't have the screen in place yet. Uh, but it is being recorded by FCAT and um, Kathy, I'm going to ask to read our introductory statement. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with Governor Baker's June 16, 2021 Act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted in the state of emergency, including an extension of the compensation provisions. I can't hear her. We can't hear you. Um, You're going to have to really scream into the mic. Hybrid is hard. Can you hear Annalie? Can you hear me? I can hear you, Annalie. Okay. Can you hear me? You sound echoing. This is Andrea. Can you hear me? Yeah, you just sound kind of muffled. How about me now? Same. Okay. Can you hear me? Denise? I can, Denise. Oh. Well, we'll just have to go forward. You can't hear me. Yes. All righty. So let's see. Uh, the March 20th, oh my goodness, yesterday, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, GL Chapter 30A, Section 20. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting or hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast or unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on the agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield hosts the meeting in the main meeting room of the municipal offices, <coughs> excuse me, with remote participation details noted on the website. So, excuse me, we need to speak more during COVID. <laughs> um, with a reminder that um, our meeting guidelines are to speak one at a time. And sometimes that is a little bit challenging when it feels like it's a fairly informal meeting, but um, uh, if we could um, try to speak one at a time, and um, especially the people at the table around here, it's a little bit harder to see you, but I will, I will recognize um, people to speak. We follow the DOFIL code of conduct, be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, non-repetitive, and um, Pleasant. <laughs> uh, board members in attendance. <clears throat> I'll do this uh, first name alphabetical tonight. Andrea Leibson. Yeah. Anne Mary Cloutier. Yeah. Denise Mason. Denise Mason here. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester here. Kathy Watroba. Kathy Watroba here. Uh, Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine here. And Emily Wolfkill present. Um, <clears throat> Uh, minutes of March 7th, 2022. Rachel? I bet you have to come closer to your mic. So, All right. I would add that. <laughs> I have um, one one suggestion, but does anyone else have any other no. suggestions um, on um, the discussion at the end of number six, um, when you talk about having a one-page informational flyer, it's for the planner, not for the ADUs. Right. Oh, perhaps you did. Okay. 
So with that, with that seems um, recording in progress. Oh, I'm going to mute my computer now since the recording. Annalie, we can't hear you now. There's no audio. So I think we will take a we will take a brief hiatus while our technical difficulties are addressed. You can also give anybody my phone number if we they need me to help troubleshoot. Do you guys need any? Can you hear? Can Jen, Jen, can you hear us now? Um, I could hear you, Annalie. I, okay, this is well, Andrea. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. But it's echoing. We, we can't, we can't keep, yeah, we can't keep that on. I'm muted. You are, you're yeah. muted? Yeah. Yep. No, it's just echoing. Am I still echoing? Are you? No. You are here, but not, I guess, on Zoom. It's so annoying. So t turn the television volume down. Okay, we'll talk again. Echo is better. Uh, no, it's still not. there. <laughs> Can you just turn that off? Uh, I believe. I, I know that happens when you've got two things going on. I've had that happen before. Well, I can turn mine off, sure. Does that help any? Do, I'm talking. Is there still an echo? That's better. I wonder right. if you go back on it. What you did is you muted it. You know, if you want to, don't need to. But doesn't look like it. <laughs> I'm hoping not. <laughs> if that's, this is a mess. That last one seems to work, to work that way. I don't know. I still mute it down. Okay, is this, how is this? It's good. Better. Ah, the two mutes, there are two mutes. All right, yes. excellent. Yeah, uh, so, um, did we have a motion to approve the amended? Minutes? I so move, Kathy Sylvester. And second by Andrea. Andrea seconds. Andy Leibson. Um, all in favor, since we're hybrid, uh, we'll have it as a roll call vote. Andrea Leibson. Andrea Leibson, uh, yes. Denise Mason. Denise Mason, yes. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Kathy Watroba. Kathy Watroba, yes. Who is on? Um, Kathy, are you muted? There we go. Kathy. Nope. Kathy Wittrova, yes. I hear you. Well, we see you nodding. Yes. You can't. Um, we can't. can't can you hear, hear me? You. you can hear I, Kathy. I can hear you. Can't okay. hear you either, Kathy Jen. Wittrova. You can't hear yeah. Jen either. Oh my God. I can hear Kathy. Yeah, we're on Zoom. Yeah. Apologies to our. Try again. Kathy, Kathy. Yeah. can you speak? Oh, back? can you hear me? Oh. Yes. Kathy Wittrova, yes? Yes, yes. Okay, and Emily Wolf, yes. So, well, our minutes are approved now. Thank you very much. Um, gotcha. We have a request for Two Childs Cross Road, which is, we've just been, um, is, there's a question about what the degree to which it's an A and R versus an APR in relation to the uh, CPC <clears throat> um, application that is going forward. So um, 
The issue is that that the line was never. The issue is that the line was never delineated. Is that correct? So, to separate the to to separate the property. Right. So you're asking about the APR application. Yes. No, okay. So, I mean the A and R application. Pardon me. Right. Yes. Yeah, so this is the exactly the APR land was never cut off from the rest of the property. And so now the property owner was trying to do something with her property and they could see that it was still connected. So she needs to go through the A&R process in order to, to separate it. So when the applicant came into the office, I looked up at the registry of deeds, the APR, and I included that in the packet. So on the last page of the APR, you can see the, the number of acres that was put into um, restricted you know, land. So I just wanted to confirm that that was the right um, acreage that was going, that they were separating off from. So am I summarizing this appropriately that the ANR needs to go through in order for the APR application to be addressed? No, the APR application is already done long time ago. It's been an APR. What we need to do is delineate the two separate pieces of property with an ANR. And that's why they're going with the application tonight. It, it's been done long time ago. It just wasn't separated officially. Uh, when you have an a, a, a APR property, you're not supposed to build on it or all, put buildings on it that aren't already there. You're not supposed to alter anything. So not knowing what you guys are looking at, but you know, just say you ladies are looking at this and I, I would assume by ha having the property split, she now then can go get a building permit or whatever no but it, do. it's it's really because she's trying to do something with the bank with her mortgage and it's associated with the larger property and she can't do it with that attached so yeah well right so in fact it is appropriate that we are addressing this as an a n r yes right okay thank you all right so um as a reminder with the planning board, when we are looking at ANRs, which mean that they do not need to go through the subdivision laws, um, that we need to make sure that the lots abut qualified way, all lots have adequate frontage and vital access exists to each lot. And I have asked Bob Walden, our building commissioner to um, opine on this. Bob, if you can speak in. Yeah. the. Uh... The lot on the corner in Greenfield and Child Cross is perfectly fine. Um, it has plenty of frontage. And what she's doing in the back is protecting land. I mean, it, it, if she wasn't doing that, it also has plenty of frontage and it's a buildable lot, but yeah. she's trying to protect it. So I, I don't see any issues with it. Right. And this is really the, the, um, the area that we're looking at. Eh, eh, right through here, right? The line. Right. Mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> All along here. Oops, into there. All right. Um, so maybe I'll entertain a motion to endorse the AP ANR. And then with a, after a second, we can have discussion. I make a motion to endorse the ANR. Denise Mason. I second it, Kathy Sylvester. Thank you. And um, do we have any discussion? Okay. I just want to ask a question. Can you hear all of us now? Okay, good. Thanks. Thank you. Rocky start, but good results. All right. Um, so I'll um, call the question. Andrea Leibson. Andrea Leibson, yes. Denise Mason. Denise Mason, yes. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Kathy Watroba. Kathy Watroba, yes. Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, yes. And Ann Lee Wolf Cool, yes. So we will in unanimously endorse the ANR. <clears throat> All righty. Sorry. Who, who moved? Denise, you Denise moved. Did, you? Yes. Denise and I second. Yes. Yes, I meant yes. <laughs> I got some. Hot minutes going on here. Okay. 
Um, so moving on in the agenda, our next issue is old business and the continuation of the public hearing. And our applicant has requested that we have a um, continuation both of the public hearing as well as an extension of the permit deadline. Um, and um, I believe the motion would be to grant the request for a continuation of the hearing and extension of the permit deadline to April 4th, 2022 at 7 p.m. Um, of an extension uh, of the site plan review public hearing of the Town of Deerfield Municipal Park and Fields Project. So if I could have a motion to that effect. It's Andrea Liebson, so, so moved. Thank you, Andrea. Kathy Sylvester, second. Thank you, Kathy. Um, so can we have any discussion? All right. Oh, so we have a question. So we're moving the deadline to the fourth. Is that the day? That Can't hear you, Rachel. Sorry, but I'm um, so we're requesting for the continuation of the hearing to April 4th at seven o'clock. That's our next full meeting. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. And and a continuation. Yes, also, the permit deadline needs to be extended also. But we haven't done that part. Well, it's all in, in, involved in one motion. That the motion is to um, have a continuation of the hearing and an extension of the permit deadline to April 4th, 2022. Any other questions? Okay. Um, so if we could have a vote on that, Andrea Leibson. Andrea Leibson, yes. Denise Mason. Denise Mason, yes. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Kathy Watroba. Kathy Watroba, yes. We heard you, Kathy. That's nice. Yay! <laughs> uh, Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, yes. And Annalie Wolfcore, yes. So um, unanimously, we are granting the continuation request. Thank you very much, ladies. <laughs> Glad to comply. <clears throat> so um, we have some planning board updates and um, and discussion. So it's not just that we'll be leaving here in five or 10 <clears throat> minutes, but I think um, I'm, I for one am appreciative of another opportunity to have some, um, have, a, <clears throat> have a good working meeting. Um, one of the first updates can be in relation to our accessory apartment draft bylaws. Um, I did send out a request to members of the Finance Committee, ZBA, and um, Select Board to uh, participate in a working group to help bring forward what some of the questions and concerns are with the draft bylaws. Um, I've received a request back, which I think makes perfect sense, that uh, potentially could the work group start after town meeting. Everyone's pretty maxed out right now with lots of meetings. And um, so that seems, I think, to be a very reasonable request. Um, the Finance Committee and the ZBA, though, are addressing this at their meetings this week and recruiting participants, um, hopefully, at that time. And then also, I have talked with Chris Curtis. He's um, calling around to other towns to find out what their experiences are with accessory apartments, um, especially in relation to some of the questions that were raised um, the last time we were working with this draft, uh, impact on the schools, landlord tenant disputes, enforcement issues, things like that. Um, so hopefully this will be helpful when the work group does get started and can kind of get the, get the decks running. So <clears throat> that's the update on that. Are there any questions? So you heard from everybody in uh, finance committee, yes. Uh, to... The Finance Committee and the ZBA mm -hmm. are address are are bringing this forward at their meetings this just week oh, to discuss to find, whether they can yeah to find um, volunteer volunteers, Get a volunteer sure a vol okay. one or two volunteers in each of the yes. Um, in terms of our planning board processes, um, po and especially we had some good discussion last week, not so much about postings or last meeting, but also writing decisions. Uh, Sue Berlatt and I have met Berlatt and I have met several times. 
I did see Sue. Yeah, there she is. She's on, on the Zoom call. Um, and have drafted out processes for the very many postings, different, different processes for different postings. And um, Rachel and Sue are going to have some follow up with that, Rachel as, as clerk. Um, and then in terms of writing decisions, um, we will be looking especially at our, the playing field site plan review um, conclusion and decision writing and have that tie into potentially a process for writing decisions. So we're still, the writing decisions is still very amorphous, but um, I think we've made some good progress on the playing fields. And once Rachel and Sue um, sort of review those together, then um, make sure that it's good with Jen and Lucy and whomever else needs to be in town. And then we'll send them out to everyone on the planning board so they'll know what some of these processes are and timelines in particular. They're, sometimes rather challenging. <laughs> um, um, Rachel, do you have any other questions or comments with that? So you all got the, this is the site plan, oh, that's a special one. But we have a site plan review um, checklist in our booklet. So it's something to look at for now too, in terms of what, and we'll put all that. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. And we'll put all that in together. Sue and I will. Which is a good reminder that at some point, um, maybe this summer, Jen, we can come back to update having one of those uh, updated mm -hmm. working meetings um, with updating our books and, right. and. I have a whole stack that I've been printing as you send it to me so we can update our books. Excellent. Good. Good. It's a whole lot easier to update than what you and Denise did at the beginning to create, right? That was fun. <laughs> It was fun. a lot of fun. <laughs> fun. It was fun. Come on, Denise. I know. <laughs> um, in terms of our planning board budget and the and in particular with the planner, um, the finance committee is meeting this week. They've pretty much, to my knowledge, gone through all of the initial submissions for budgets. And now what they're looking at is uh, <laughs> how much all of these budgets are over what um, <sighs> what is needed for level funding or the level funding is the goal. Um, and so they're going to then start their cutting of the budgets. Um, Rachel has drafted a white paper handout, uh, side one being uh, what, um, what the planning board does and side two being what assistance is needed. Oh, good. Um, so um, it's not it's not very exciting. I'll be it's there's zero sexy I'll, about it. Um, thank you. Yeah, and it's a uh, info sheet. So I'm calling it kind of an info sheet. Uh, closer like, to the mic. Sorry, so I know. <laughs> here, <laughs> let me let in. me moving everything okay. here. So um, the front page is just a review of the kinds of things that we work on, and I think it would be good for everybody to look at it. Um, I'm kind of a mission driven person, but this is about also like the general purpose of a planning board. What does the planning board do? Actually, if you just Google that, what's the planning board do? Um, it looks like we're, you know, not alone in trying to figure all that out. Um, it's, a, it's a many angled, um, it's a tentacle of a beast. Um, but the general mission is to provide um, for and guide the orderly growth and development of a community. Um, in accordance with what? So in accordance with the master plan, which we do have, I, I made some copies of, for myself here just to look at, again, the master plan of 20 years ago, but also to update the master plan. So you build the master plan and then you update it. You don't just kind of just, oh, well, what did, you know, what did Carolyn say 20 years ago? Um, <laughs> thank you for this. And it's a great master plan, but there, and there are things that we've done and we need to update in terms of like, okay, check, now what? and things that we haven't even done. And um, I'm gonna to get to one of those things in a minute. Um, so, and if you look at the MG, the mass guidelines, the mass law guidelines on Title Seven Forty A, that's us, like that's us. You just go through that whole thing that helps us understand what the, where the bylaws, you know, help us guide us. Um, and then we need to review those bylaws um, and then use the general guidance of the master plan for the town. 
I'm sorry, I don't have this for everybody. I could probably. Well, I think to the uh, the overview is good, and then we'll figure out kind of how okay. we're going forward. So, and then I just outline, you know, what it means to be on this, what we do um, in terms of meetings, and and I actually, I have to be honest with you, like of all the the site views, you know, we're supposed to call a meeting when we go on a site view. Do you know that? Like when we go to visit a site, and if there are more of us, then. If we have a quorum, we have to call a meeting when we're out visiting Treehouse or walking around. Our we didn't have a quorum, I think, either time. Did either time. So we had that once before, and we did that. Does that time. mean that it's a meeting that you other can, people can come to? Uh, so the you can can't deliberate, but you can discuss. That's that's exactly the last two site right. plan. It's just interesting did, because it makes yeah it makes sense. I think there was one about four years ago. That I think we've discovered that afterwards. Anyway. Um, and we also participate in other um, other committees. That's another feature of this, right? So everybody's involved in something else in order to bring that back to this again. More tentacles on the octopus. Um, I, I try to emphasize that while the planning board is centrally an uh, information gathering board, it is a board where people are welcome to come. All meetings are public, and the responsiveness. We're eager for res for public input. Um, a little bit about our connection also the time spent uh, with the administrative staff that I put included there. So basically what all of this is doing is Just showing saying what we do, <clears throat> what we do. And, and it's a long list. And, yeah. it, and it, it's technical. It is so um, basically those four things and ours, which we just, you know, which are straightforward generally, but not always. Um, site plan review, special permitting, and then bylaw review and bylaw um, adherence. Um, we are the special permitting, you know, we have the marijuana special permitting, that's why they come to us. Um, work in a coordination with ZBA and the conservation committee on various projects. We've done that before with um, meetings where we've actually had joint meetings as well um, as maybe one of us goes to their meeting so that, but if a, there's a project that's required requires uh, multiple committees, we've actually tried to um, address that by meeting together so that the, these, whoever's interested in establishing themselves in Deerfield has a little bit, one little break. Um, and then also trying to um, streamline any kind of process so that anybody who is looking to establish themselves in, or make a change on a project or whatever, that they have a clear path to, to do what they need to do um, within the guidelines of our zoning laws bylaws. Um, we review and recommend capital improvements in town. We just review them. We don't, we don't, we, we don't approve them, just review. Um, and then this master plan, and this is something that we haven't really like ta tackled. Again, I just pulled it out the other day and I'll tell you. So the second page, the second page is about where we need support and just de describing what the administrative assistant here, here they are, not even Bob's here too. Like, it's great. We've got great support, from, but it's not, it's still not, you know, we, there's more that can be done. Um, so outlining what the administrative assistant in the building inspector's office does for us and CONCOM and CBA and the building inspector, there's this, this person has got her own hydra to deal with. Um, uh, the assistant town administrator has been incredibly helpful to us. Uh, liaise, is the liaison with us in the town administration, but also with every other committee and every other, you know, uh, functionary that uh, needs that kind of support. Um, and they come to our meetings. Town planner would manage with the assistance of the with the assistance of the planning board, as well as would manage along with the ZBA and the select board the following things. And then, so this is a list that. This is a list I'm gonna just read because then it's on the record. So review and revise master plan as progress is made or priority shift. That's one. Offer more agility when opportunities present for business or development. Two, help write decisions, offer input on conditions. Three, uh, seek alignment of land use bylaws with the master plan and the concerns of town residents. Four. That's five is decrease the need for legal and consultancy support instead of relying on the sound process and decision, decision, just written decisions. Six, bring forward changes with better understanding of the consequences of those changes. That's a little nebulous, but that's, that has a lot to do with the kind of research and review, general ex 
experience and understanding of um, this business that we're in. You know. So that's one. Then uh, develop a clear, straightforward protocols for business to follow who are looking to establish, sorry, looking to mm-hmm. establish in Deerfield. It's a typo there, but um, this is what Jen has been pushing for. And I think that's the thing, like working with Jen to understand how to move the dial on this a bit more quickly with some of these and, and in or out, like sometimes it could be just like, but either way. So um, that would be support to Jen, who was already on that. Um, promote zoning bylaws change, promote zoning bylaw changes consistent with master plan, plan to support thoughtful growth and development responsive to concerns of residents. Uh, I think that's kind of a foregone conclusion. That's kind of what we're trying to do, but they would do that with us too. And then pursue grants to support growth and provide administrative support to manage the grant grants. Um, so if there's anything else, this is, you know, hardly an exhaustive list, but it is kind of um, out of the brains of us from last meeting um, and just some things that um, come up when you look, if anybody did the, uh, that training. Citizen planner training. Citizen planner training. A lot of this comes out of that as well. Specifically before the board, this is the last little list. And these are the concerns that we have promised that we would consider, uh, you know, a promise we have uh, we have stated publicly that we will look at. <laughs> so I feel that it's important to say it again. We were straight up asked at the last meeting by several townspeople and to look at the center village frontage requirements. It's, and Annalie's calling this, this is up zoning, right, Annalie? Yes, I, I believe that's the term. That's the term. <laughs> so I love that. It sounds very technical. I feel very clever when I say it. Um, <laughs> but basically, just to look at that. Boom. Uh, review of our current accessory development bylaws and consider change. So starting with what we have, what is it that's about it that's maybe broke? Let's see, whatever. These are things. Review the entertain overlay map, overlay with map. To be fully honest, we barely got to see the map at the end of the day. I think it would be just good to review it so that we were very comfortable with that when it came, when a, when a project comes down the road. Let me, I'm going to talk about that in just two seconds. Consider, this is super interesting. I see Carolyn has her hand up. But can, I'm going to just finish, Carolyn, and then I'll- Oh, yeah. No, go ahead. Two more points. Um, one is consider rezoning East Deerfield Railway from C1 commercial to C3 industrial. This has come up a couple of times in my tenure, and I saw that at, it's a master plan suggestion, mm-hmm. and I've seen it come up. And so it's just something to look at. It's a part of town that, anyway- we looked at that. We looked at a solar project for that part of town. It didn't. Yeah. It didn't meet enough. Anyway, it did get us looking in that part of town. Yeah. And then um, I think we just need to keep looking at our subdivision regulations. Uh, the let me let me say in the land of the entertainment overlay and the subdivision regulations, those are two things that um, there is a there's a kind of a a uh, way of looking at things, which is, you know, you've got a tool in your kit, that's our bylaw. And it comes to the test of things when somebody comes and wants to use it. And you're like, give it to them. And you're like, okay, go ahead. Does it work? And I think that um, that is one way of looking at bylaws. You, you test them when a, something comes to bear. Um, I feel a little bit like it is... It is incumbent on us to know that a little bit better than we do. And so that when somebody comes to test it with us, they have the experience of having tested it somewhere else. If it's a, if it's a, you know, Motel 6 that wants to throw something in, they've done this someplace else. We haven't. And so Mm -hmm. that's the kind of thing that I think the technical assistance is really important for us to understand it walking into it. Um, so it's not like we want to look at it to revamp it. We need to look at it to secure our understanding of what it is um, and be sure that we're very clear and, and looking at it with the map because that actually kind of came and it was good, boom, 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 but we just need to look at it with the map. Mm-hmm. If you remember that was that what they were, came to us separately. Um, and then subdivision regulations is the same. It's just a matter of really reviewing them. And I think perhaps we're very secure there, um, but it is something that's been on the list. So 
I would really put that parenthetically number five to the top four. And I, I'm sorry, I, I, I kept saying those three, but then when I looked at the rail, rail yard thing, I was like, oh my God, that's right. That's on, that's on the list 20 years ago. Yeah. That was a concern. So something to, something to look at. And again, it's, it's not, it's not going to, it's not going to be an issue until like it did with the solar array, then it was an issue. So then we're like, God, it would really have been great if it was, you know, C3 industrial, like it's not. So that means the project's kind of scuttled because we haven't taken the time to, or we haven't had a, a chance to look at that and figure out, well, maybe that is a good idea for somebody else to come in there um, at, for the solar project or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what I have. Again, super unsexy, no colors, no bubbles, <laughs> um, but informationally, I think that's, Carolyn, you That's have a great. question? Thank you. Thank you. No, I was just um, actually, I didn't mean to cut Rachel off, but she was because she was listing this. I just was remembering that, in fact, the rail yard has been an issue because that East Deerfield area, because it's not, I don't, I don't agree that the zoning is correct out there, but we also, you know, there is residents there, so we need to be careful. And so whether it's a, Industrial, we rezone it for industrial, or we have some kind of qualifier or something that limits Agreed. what we can do out there, but has more broader definition. It has been an issue for as long it, when I was on the planning board. Absolutely. You know, the last when we had this. When okay. We had Sorry. And then I just wanted to add when you were talking about the zoning, the up zoning. Um, we we were talking about when we're doing this downtown campus and the revitalization of the downtown we really need to look at the mixed use zoning and form um based zoning they call it so it's mixed and use dash form based. quite a bit of discussion about that tonight yeah so thank you i i just wanted to make sure that form it based form form based zoning Form-based zoning, yes. And, and mixed use. Uh, uh, Bob Bob can help with the zoning stuff, but, and we do under C2 have the ability to have like incidental residential, like one unit or something. But the mixed use is allows you to have more units. And this form base is a new thing from this complete neighborhoods partnership thing. And I, I, won't, I won't take over the meeting because both Anna Lee and Denise are we're gonna talk about it, but, um, I just want to make, and Lily, I just want to make sure that people are aware when you start talking about a couple of things that we have to talk about, it's the downtown area and, you know, over by the rail yard. Right. When we had that um, project, the, it was really remarkable to me how clear headed the, those residents were. Actually, M.A. was there. <laughs> I think, M.A., weren't you there for some of that, I think, because of the sound. <laughs> anyway, well, so um, again, Rachel, thank you very much. I mean, the goal of this paper is to distribute it, potentially at least initially, to the finance committee. The select board already is supporting the idea <laughs> of having a, some technical planning assistance via the contracted services. Um, <clears throat> we're hoping to um, get a little bit of um, traction with the finance committee as they are starting to do all of their cutting. So, um, so uh, I guess there's a couple of things. I mean, uh, Rachel does have a copy of this. We can send it out to the rest of the planning board and people can, uh, it would probably be really within the next 24 hours or so send back, I mean, that might even be too late. Carolyn, do you know um, what I, I haven't seen with the agenda, whether or not they'll get to contracted services tomorrow, or do you think it will be next week? Uh, I don't know, because uh, I, I, um, I honestly don't know. We have to look at what we're going to prioritize together, and the select board haven't had any real input. And of course, we're supporting your um, requests. So yes. Um, I, I'm hoping that we'll have some discussion tomorrow, but we won't actually have to cut anything. We just have to figure out what, we, what numbers we're going to come up with, I think, first, before we start talking about cutting services. Okay, good. So a parent, uh, 
potentially we've got uh, six or seven days to finalize uh, what this will be and distribute it. I think to some degree it's going to have to be in the mailboxes here since some members of, of the finance committee don't do a lot of email. Oh, and we can, I mean, yeah, we can go figure to that the out. meeting too. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess the question would be as, um, as planning board members look at this and we'll send it out after today's meeting so you actually have a, um, an electronic copy of it. Um, if you have suggestions, I, I would say uh, we're really, um, we've got some tension here because on one hand, we want it to be comprehensive and, and uh, you know, illustrative of why, of everything that we do and why we need help. But on the other hand, have it be as concise and abbreviated as possible. So um, if that could be, does that sound like a good goal for the planning board members? And Rachel, when do you think um, we need to have it back to you by? Yeah, soon, soon, sooner the better. So I can put, you know, pretty pictures on it. it <laughs> or sparkle. A border, maybe a I mean, I think, uh, you know, I think that the message, the message is clear that there's a lot on the plate of a planning board. Everybody knows that the recommendations that Anna or the research that Annalie did supports this. Um, we have had consultants in the past designated to oh, our, yeah, I mean, I think that right. that's one of the, the features of this that's very strong for me is that um, when I first joined the planning board, we had a marvelous consultant who was specific to our, she was from the FERCOG, and she was specific to our uh, planning board. She worked with other planning boards too. She was not an employee of the town, she was an employee of FERCOG, and she was spectacular. Um, at her retirement was that, you know, crushing. And um, so, and because the FERCOG is still short staffed, I mean, that's not even, um, so anyway, and I, I did a little more research looking at Jen's, um, Jen's work looking into PCVC, PCVC, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Planning Commission, right. Planning Commission, yeah. Yeah, it, they look like a great organization, and if they can be helpful to us and we can establish a relationship as a town, not just the planning board. I mean, that's the thing that was really nice about Pat was that she was very specific to the planning board and she knew the Franklin County issues so so well. Um, but, you know, you can't always luck out like that and, um, and with good guidance. And the bottom line is, uh, I think understanding is that she works with us, you know, as a town, you know, it's, she doesn't, or she, he, they, uh, are guides. They're not, they're not dictators. They're mentors, if you will. I don't know how to describe that relationship, but it's Coaches. not. Yeah, it's not exactly. It's not somebody that's telling the planning board necessarily what to do. It's organizing things so that uh, the town knows the direction that's going. In, so. All right. So, how about if um, we say by um, today's Monday night, Thursday. Um, Thursday. Thursday, 9 a.m. <laughs> sure. Okay. Is that doable? Do we think plenty of I'll be away for two days, but. Um... <laughs> Bring your computer with you. I'll give it a shot. I'll do it on plane tomorrow. <laughs> we'll do our best, Rachel. Yes, thank you. Okay, no so promises. if the planning board, um, first of all, Rachel tonight, when she gets home, will send us the electronic yep. copy. I just sent it to her. And um, then um, by Thursday morning, if we could uh, send back to Rachel um, her, our suggestions that uh, of anything that was missing and also any ways that we can um, condense it a bit to um, make sure it really says what it needs to say for these folks. Well, I think we also need to believe it. We need to yes. know this. And it's not just, you know, I mean, to, to, it's one thing to say, we just need more. It's another thing to be specific about the things that we need. And I think that, that's, that it's that specificity that makes it more compelling. It's not like, oh, we're just overwhelmed. And, yeah. you know, we've got great support. And yeah, exactly. Right. So I, I right, it makes right. sense. Okay, thank you, Rachel. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, um, another um, we're getting, we're doing some good on, on the side work and I really appreciate the planning board members and the staff who are working on these things. 
um, one of them being the fee schedule. So um, Andrea, would you like to give an update on that? Sure. Um, Denise Mason and I met with Jen uh, once, and then I met again with Jen another time. We have looked at the fees that other towns are um, charging for um, similar kind of activities that we do here in Deerfield. I'm afraid I haven't had time to really digest them, so I can't make any recommendations at this point but I believe they were sent to the planning board members and I'm going to ask people to take a look at them so we could see where we think um, we should make any changes if necessary. Uh, we have information from I think five or six other uh, nearby towns. Right, I think um, for sending our information back to Andrea, uh, better safe than sorry, if you can do that as BCC. Um, and those would be questions or suggestions that you have in relation to um, making any of the um, changes to our fee schedule. And then I think Andrea and probably Andrea and um, oh, Jen may awesome. maybe then we'll get together and um, uh, come up with some suggestions on what our fee should be for a definitive subdivision <laughs> and bring that back to a meeting. Um, there is a question as to whether or not we will need to have public hearings. I believe for regulatory things like this, I believe we need to, but I'm not certain. So we, we we'll can first look at the um, at the information. If we decide that what Deerfield is currently charging seems appropriate and we all agree to that, there is no need to have a hearing. If we decide that we need to change our fees then we would have to have a public oh, hearing. Okay, fine. So um, our next planning board meeting is April 4th. I imagine that will be fairly consumed with the playing fields. Um, so perhaps we could have that discussion discussion at our, our May meeting. Usually we're the first Monday in May, but that's, um, why is that a problem? I forget why that's a problem. That's a problem, uh, the first see. Monday in May. Uh, it's, Town elections. Oh, that's oh, right. Town elections. I knew there was something. Okay. <laughs> so then um, potentially we'll be meeting on May 9th. Um, if that yep. seems acceptable to the planning board. So perhaps we can have a discussion um, of the new fees, of potential new fees May 9th. And then if we do need to have a public hearing, we could have that at our June 6th meeting. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Jen and Denise and Andrea for um, following through with that. And I, I think Sue, you were you helped with getting some of the research done, I believe. So this is where it does take a village. We certainly know that, don't we? Um, so um, <laughs> the last initiative to discuss, um, which uh, Carolyn gave us a little bit of a segue for, but um, there is a the, the question of up zoning or sort of um, revitalizing our town center. Um, but before we talk about that, there really has been lots going on lately with um, talking about what does our town center look like? What, you know, what, what can be an attractive Deerfield for people to come to in the 21st century? Um, and so one of the things is Denise and I were talking, and Denise has been, and the, the, and the community, Connecting Community Initiative, CCI, has been very busy with talking about a, um, a basically a, a municipal campus, but realizing that some of us are really in, immersed in that and other people not so much. So Denise is going to give a little bit of an overview about the municipal campus idea, yeah. and then um, we're going to have Lily follow up with a little bit more on great. the senior housing. Okay, Denise? great. Thanks, Annalie. Yeah, I, I realized that three out of the seven planning board members are on connected co connecting community initiative, but still, even though you are, you aren't necessarily, you don't necessarily know everything that's going on because each person has a part. So I'm ju just going to pass these out. If you can pass them out. These are postcards that we made that actually we made them to go to a conference, the Mass Municipal Association conference that didn't happen in person, but I think they've been instrumental anyway in helping, you know, helping um, 
you know, pass them out to a few people. But just to back up, connecting the commu connected community, geez, connecting community initiative actually started from, I think, a conversation between Carolyn and Lily. And it sort of blossomed from there. They asked a few of us to join their meeting to brainstorm the name. And we came up with Connecting Community Initiative. And then we continued to, I, I guess the whole point was to, I'll just read it, unites more than 20 boards to design a vibrant downtown that links our civic buildings and community services while breathing new life into our architectural treasures. I think one of the main points of CCI is to eliminate all the silos in town. And I think to date, we've probably had about eight meetings, I think. We just started in November. So since then, we did come up with our postcards. Lily came up with a great website for us that direct that directs link. Oh my God, I can't even speak tonight. It directly links to our town website, which can be difficult at sometimes getting information. So she did that. So basically, what this is 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 bringing together all different individuals on every board. I think we have collectively about 15 people that represent 20 to 22 boards in town. And we're talking about all the different projects, the different initiatives. And I think, you know, the main thing is that we, I think ultimately we want to have a walkable community, walkable campus. Again, this is a brainstorm of Lily to, you know, to do this campus and to have everyone sort of facing so that it's more of a downtown community. And also understanding that we have an aging population. I think 45% of our town is over 45 years old. So we do have an aging population. So we really have to understand that. So there's so many different things that are going on. I'm not gonna read all of these because I think probably most of you who are on here have already heard of, about a lot of this. But um, people have been working diligently on the town common for probably the past five years. They've been working on the library for at least the past five years. Um, senior housing, oh my gosh, they've been working on that for 20 years. Last century. At least, okay. Um, we've got so many different things going on. So this, is, this seemed to be the perfect way to bring everyone together so that everyone was working together instead of the separate silos. So I think so far it's been, it's been just a really great experience. So we were able to use these. We have talked to our legislators at least once to um, Natalie Blay and Joe Comerford, and we had these to pass out. And I think they were very impressed at what we're doing here. And um, we just want to continue that conversation, which we've not heard back yet. So no pressure here. I think Casey emailed them the other day. We still haven't heard anything back, but we want to continue because there is a lot of, a lot of money coming down the pike, I think it was $17 billion. And I think there's $9.4 billion left and we want a piece of that action. So we, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot that we need. So what, I think one of our main things right now is um, we've worked on a couple of different grants. I'm working with Casey and then we also do, we do have a grant writer and we're working on a um, community one-stop grant that will, if we get the full amount, it would be $400,000 that we could use towards um, architectural design um, and planning for a municipal camp for the um, municipal center, which would be the former grammar school slash senior center, would turn into our municipal center. And then we would um, add an addition that would be a slash community senior center onto that. So, you know, I'm not gonna continue because there's, there's a whole lot going on, but if anybody here has any additional questions, please come to our meeting. They're open meetings. You can, there's always public comment. Um, you can just give me a phone call. I'd be happy to discuss anything, but there is a lot going on, but we have a lot of people working on it together. So that's, it's been really great. Yeah. Um, certainly the beginnings of the municipal campus, as I understand it, are the, um, is the old grammar school, which could become our new municipal offices, yes. uh, potentially uh, with the addition of the senior center, community center, um, the library, senior housing, uh, not quite sure what would happen with the old church. Um, we don't know yet. Not quite sure, yeah. you know, the, exactly what 
would be happening with this building here, but the municipal campus is really what we're starting. I mean, what, what I'm looking at as part of the conversation tonight. Does anyone have any questions for Denise about the municipal campus? You know, idea? I, I do have one, one thing to add. I've met with MA and we have met with, um, with UMass and talking about energy pertaining to not only the campus, but to our elementary school. And if, if all pans out, we could potentially save at least 10% in our energy costs just for the elementary school and just from that one meeting. So I think, I think that, you know, that shows the power of actually all of us talking to each other. So we're also looking towards possible geothermal system that would connect all the municipal buildings. So possibly that and some solar. All right, so I'll have a segue. Um, to senior housing, senior housing. Thank you, Denise, very much. <laughs> a lot of work that has gone into yeah, that. Yeah. Tongue tied. A lot. Um, yes, and thank you to all the other people who have been participating in that as well. Um, senior housing would be part of that municipal campus. And um, one of the things that we discovered at our last uh, ad hoc senior housing committee meeting is that there's a newly, there's a new grant opportunity called Complete Neighborhoods, um, primarily connected with Mass MBT MBTA. Um, I'll introduce the Complete Neighborhood and then I'll sort of pass it on to Lily. Um, with the Complete Neighborhood being one where there's access to housing, jobs, education, essential needs, services, amenities, all organized at a human scale. Um, it's clearly our municipal campus concept. And transportation as well. And transportation, right, right, right. Um, Deerfield has been approached to join Orange, Montague, Waitley, and Deerfield and Greenfield um, as a complete neighborhood and apply for a grant. And so part of what um, has been requested of the planning board, and we can launch into this more, is that we can um, write a letter of support for the grant. But Lili, onward. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I have been attending a um, small town housing group that uh, represents a number of people from Leiden, Leverett, Irving, Conway, all, all over the place. And in our last meeting was the woman who is one of the managers of this grant that Alyssa LaRose brought in. And Alyssa used to be with uh, FergCog, but she's now with um, RDI Rural Development Inc. and Franklin County Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority, who have thankfully shortened their acronym to HRA. So she's with HRA RDI now. She's and, oh. Say what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so she brought this woman whose name escapes me right now, I'm sorry, but to talk about the Complete Neighborhoods Grant. And if you go to their, the site, it starts off with MBTA communities. And she said, do not, do not worry about that because there are actually three different sections. And so you, when you first look at it, you think, oh, well, we don't count because we're not within 495 basically, but there are two other opportunities. And um, so I been in touch with Alyssa and she asked if we wanted to join uh, this larger group and where we would all stand a better chance. And it basically goes along route two Greenfield would take the lead, um, but it also includes now, potentially, uh, Deerfield and, and Waitley. We are going to present this to the select board at their next meeting to see if they will approve this. Wednesday. Idea. Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. So um, the idea behind the complete neighborhoods is that we could, the first thing that we apply for, which is by April 15th, um, we can get all these technical services. And as um, Denise mentioned, one of the concepts I'd love to get in there is that if we could use these professionals, we get their professionals and their services apparently to look at using geothermal 
And if we drive it from senior housing as the driver, then the, the third phase is for focused on housing. So we, the first thing that we apply for is these technical service grants. Then if we can roll geothermal into our senior housing, it might it will help to cover more of the other stuff for the whole municipal idea. And then once you're in that pipeline, you're then eligible for, uh, I can tell you, hang on. Um, I just got another email today. So let me, I could be there because they had a meeting and there were some questions about stuff that communities, so we would be designated as a district with all of these other towns. But communities can designate more than one complete neighborhood in this regional application. And each community must designate a minimum of one, but there is no limit, which is an interesting idea for us to, to think about the other um, possible areas, although we've got our hands full right now, but just to think about um, technical, assistance activities discussed were site-specific planning, pre-development, neighborhood planning, upper floor redevelopment, mixed use, and multifamily zoning. And they are the things that can be supported. And you get, a, you get 30 months to bring this to fruition. We want to move faster than that. But the other thing is that this could provide the planning board, hopefully, with um, zoning assistance for bylaws around all this stuff. And then in the course of doing all this, um, we started thinking about form-based zoning, which is something that Northampton has been looking into for a number of years and they've just come out with a report. And um, I sent a PowerPoint of that to um, Anna Lee and to Carolyn. But the idea behind form-based zoning is to stop thinking as, the focus isn't on the land use, but the form of how it's used so that you're focused on creating human scale um, sites that stay in character. So that's how you get mixed use so that you have um, places that look like, like say our downtown right now, but you can have housing on top, like, like happens above Leo's table and stuff. Um, anyway, so there's like all these possibilities coming out um, getting a little ahead of my skis on the, I think on the form-based zoning, but I think that in order to bring this municipal campus and this revitalization to life, we will need to change our bylaws. And this might be a um, mechanism to do that. And when I say mechanism, I'm talking about the grant to bring us the services to support the planning board in this process, while also giving senior housing the um, services to do our site feasibility for the, the campus as well. So there's kind of a lot in that. And it's kind of funny how senior housing sort of is expanded <laughs> into this other stuff, but I'm, I'm happy to answer any other questions. So basically, you're interested in a letter of support from the planning board you. for your application for this uh, community neighborhood collaboration with these other towns. Um, and maybe we'll get some bucks. Thank you. That, <laughs> thank you. Yes, that is exactly it. Um, so we are seeking your support for both our application for complete neighborhoods, but also our application for the re to be a part of this regional application. Cause we could do it solo or we could do it regional, but it does seem to make the most sense to do it as 
part of a region and Alyssa strongly recommends it and seems says it's more likely that we'll get the help that way. Um, we couldn't align ourselves better with um, Greenfield, Montague, Orange, Irving, um, and then Waitley because we just fit in. So Waitley's apparently Waitley is already doing this. And yeah. so we would be the connector with Waitley, but it is certainly behooves us. And I'm sure that's why Waitley decided to join. Hey, Montague in. too. Montague's in there. Yeah. Oh, Montague. That's what I meant. It's Greenfield, Montague, Irving, Orange. And then it sinks down to uh, Waitley. So we're the connector with Waitley. And um, so the, the collaborative here would be so much, I mean, it's to our advantage. There's no question um, that we'd have a better chance getting it. And from a, from a town point of view, this is not a workload for Casey and Jen in our select board's office because it's the FERCOG is writing the grant and then they would administer the grant. Of course, we don't, you know, wouldn't get any administrative um, expense from it, but it doesn't matter because Jen and K uh, Casey have no ability to take on, you know, uh, you know, a grant like this. So um, having it administered and handled by the FERCOG is really to our advantage, a huge advantage too. Are there other questions from the planning board? Yep, we do. It. Yes, I have a couple Denise? of questions. First of all, what's the turnaround time for the grant? So um, the application is due April 15th okay. and they will get back to us by May, they say. That's, that's amazing. Okay, yes. second question is, so there are a number of towns involved. So do you know what the financial award is? No, <laughs> I do not. I'm, I'm just curious as to, you know, would that be split evenly? And is that enough to actually secure services? I believe so. They will put in a, they will put in for a request and amount so that each of us will have adequate technical advice. Okay. I, I don't know what the total is because I mean, this is just like brand new on the radar, right? But, um, you know, if you look it up, if you look it up, it's really a cutting edge kind of um, stuff. And it looks like this is where the governor is going to put some money. And that's where, you know, these are the kind of things we have to go after if we're going to get money, because this is where your all your funds are coming down to. Yep. Okay. One, one so, last question, Lily. Is I, let me just, can I just add to that answer, though? Um, so we do have a complete um, and formal request into the CPC with, um, with quotes and stuff from, uh, from developers for senior housing. That'll be, that's about $30,000. We would probably certainly base a part of our request on that. So that would be the minimum thing that we would put in there. Um, and then we would have to figure out uh, how much to ask about for geothermal and assay kind of a thing. So I, that's kind of my thought process right now. And if people can think of other things that we should add in there, get that in. Well, we, we need to have a landscaping plan that encompasses the entire campus. And that would be part of, you know, I mean, you have to figure out parking, shared parking with all these different projects, right. like the library park uh, right. project, the, you okay. know, senior. So that, but we have to put, so that needs to be another a line item in the request yeah. for technical services. So we got, we, we got to get our act together. <laughs> okay. We got to come up with a so number. That, first, we need to know. We that don't doubt you, Lily. We don't doubt you. You guys don't need to figure that out. We're going to figure this out on Wednesday. Yeah, I just had the one last question. You you answered part of it, but um, since you you know you talked about so many different things, I'm just wondering about prioritizing and how many things can you ask for, and does that dilute the ask? So well, we're going to make a list. We'll prioritize them, and then we got to talk to the FERCOG. The FERCOG yeah. is going to advise us what's okay. Thank you. I mean, they're going to look at the total picture from all the communities. But we do know that housing is a priority. And that is um, in the um, that that is in the conversation. So so senior house having senior housing drive this and tucking as much as we can under the senior housing skirt. 
makes the three coats. Well, out. what you're doing is you're taking the heating system and cooling system from the library project. You're taking it from the town hall. You're taking it from the community senior center and you're putting it, bundling it under senior housing. You're okay. potentially taking a landscape, well. a landscape plan that would make attractive parking for the library, the senior center, the town hall, the senior park, uh, senior housing, you would come up with some kind of flow and plan that's consistent and attractive and green and, you know, all this kind of stuff. But again, so you're lowering the cost of each individual um, project that we have on the list. And you're trying to put together enough grants to actually make it all happen. So it's a little bit complicated to say the least, but well, it doesn't mean that we can't all figure it out. Blanks to be filled in, but um, it sounds like with Thurcog's help and working with these other communities, we might have a good shot at this. And, and again, you're looking for a, a letter of support from the planning board. Yes, please. So um, maybe we can have a, a motion to um, submit a letter of support to in, to the grantors via Lily <laughs> and second the motion and we can have some more discussion if we need with the planning board. Um, I so move Kathy Sylvester. I second Andrea Liebson. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Um, MA. Uh, I was just going to say, when you're talking about the the center, the, the the whole campus idea, don't forget the police station and the school. Yes, yes, Correct. we are including that too. Good, okay. I, it's so, just, you know, there's so many buildings that yeah. we forget to list them. But yeah, No, that's the fine. I just, I just don't want, those are really important, partly because of geothermal needs in, you know, in order for it to balance, you need folks putting heat in, taking heat out, putting cooling in, taking cooling out. And, it, and, and so the community, there's piping going along the whole system. Okay. And, um, and so you need, you need all sorts of types of uh, buildings that, to make it work. Thank you. So, are there other discussion about the motion or? I was just going to say you did. You had a, a first and a second, and you just didn't vote. No, I know this is our oh. discussion time. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. And then, and then, thank you, Jen. Um, so, is there any other discussion with so the planning board? We're moving to write a letter of support to the CPC. No. No, it's to the FERCOG. To the FERCOG. To the FERCOG. Well, to the grantors. Uh, it is the grantors that, that they um, see. We they want it's an open letter. It's a, a letter of support from the planning board. To yes. the grantors, right? For the, for, yeah, we'll take out. To for the, the grant. grant. That right. makes more sense. Yeah. And the collaboration with the other towns. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, so um, we'll have a vote. Uh, Andrea Liebson. Andrea Liebson, yes. Denise Mason. Denise Mason, yes. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Kathy Wetroba. Kathy Wetroba, yes. Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, yes. And Emily Wolfkull, yes. And uh, thank you thank very much for your draft of the letter. And we'll thank you out. again, ladies. <laughs> yes, good. Um, and then the, the last piece that is very much connected with this and really is a discussion uh, time is um, we have been threading throughout all of tonight's conversation has been this idea of upzoning the town center. Um, we did early on last September identify that as one of the priorities that we might want to address. And it certainly is being talked about and this vision of what the town could look like um, that could in fact promote economic development as well as provide for workforce housing and um, a really attractive town. Um, but there's lots of questions with that. Um, you know, what, what's the area we're talking about? Is it 
spitting distance from the fountain at Town Common, or is it from the playing fields all the way down to Sugarloaf? It, um, you know, what are we talking about? Are we talking about frontage, uh, minimum lot side, height restrictions, form-based neighborhoods? And there's so the question that I am looking for are really two questions for the planning board right now as we have some discussion is first of all, I think um, with some good mentoring from from Carolyn, one of the things that I think makes a lot of sense is for us to, um, if this is something that we want to go forward with before we even put any, you know, the paper that we have a lot of conversations with a lot of people in town to find out, well, what do they think is working? What doesn't work? Um, what should the area be? What's the, what's the goal? What's the vision? Um, and that may actually take a while to figure all of that out. But if, if this is in fact something that we as a planning board would like to move forward with in a, in a um, very deliberate way, but it's not going to be for you know, town meeting in October, that's for sure. Um, you know, is that something we would like to, uh, to go forward with? And then if so, <laughs> So say again, so what we'd like to go forward with is? Um, exploring how might we upzone town center, whatever upzoning means and whatever town center means. And that's where, yeah, um, I mean, it could very well be that we could start initially and maybe we'd have sort of a small work group from the planning board, I could imagine that happening, you know, develop some, uh, as Denise has mentioned, some stand, you know, some standard questions. So we go to CCI, we go to the Finance Committee, we go to the ZBA, we go to you know, select board, all these different, uh, the senior center, you know, talk, start talking to people um, about what do they, you know, uh, well, <laughs> with what's whatever is on our questions, and then, then it will, it will take on a life of its own, hopefully. But um, certainly we've talked about wanting to do that. Is yep. that something that um, is planning board discussion? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so and I'll try to, I'll try to uh, speak through me so because it could easily right, be. Right. Yes. So are, are we talking about a survey or are we talking about just a public forum where people could throw ideas okay. out? And or, I mean, I think that the ultimate goal is to get as much input as possible. Um, and so it might be that some, some aspects of our community could do better in a survey, others could do better in a, mm -hmm. in a conversation. I don't know, okay. but that's a good question, Andrea. Um, Denise and then Carolyn. Okay. Well, I was going to say, first of all, I think it would be good to define the area first. And then second, um, I think we should, I think we should formulate some questions before we go and just open it up. I think, I think people are, I think they'll respond easier to questions rather, rather than leave it open ended. So, and I think the questions have to be all the same, you know, it's basic survey, but it's just, I think instead of sending the survey out, I think in person would be a lot better, especially going around to businesses. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. And then the third thing is to find up zoning so that we have really have a better understanding of what we're asking people. Right, excellent. So, yeah. Okay, uh, Carolyn? Well, one of the re one of the reasons I was hoping that we could, you just start the conversation is because we don't really have an area and what's the area? We, we have this campus concept. We sort of are down from the town common up to the town park. Okay, that's our general area. So we want to support walkability, sociability, and vitality downtown. So does that mean that we would look at mixed use zoning in, on Elm Street? How far down on Sugarloaf? How far down on South Main Street? How far north on North Main Street? I mean, people, have to, you got to get people to discuss where they want this district. And then it's kind of a, you have the central village district, you have zone, you know, zone two uh, or commercial two, 
zoning. I mean, it's all chopped up. And as Bob has said, you're allowed to have, you have already are allowed to have one residential, um, um, you know, unit as, or incident, incidental unit. But, you know, if we're really talking about workforce housing and you want incentivized people, and I think of Cumberland Farms. So, so what, what, are you, what are we talking about? We're talking about someone trying to buy Cumberland Farms. You have a commercial, um, you know, entity on the bottom floor and they raise, raise the second story and they put some housing units in there to make it, um, you know, affordable for that, uh, some, that person to develop and restore and renovate, um, you know, that kind of thing. You, you've got to make, there's got to be incentives built in. You've got to make it desirable for people to um, want to live there and, and, and be in, is inviting as a community. So we're, what are we talking about? We sort of have this you know, I mean, the zoning is back from my, you know, from the early 80s and seven, 80s and um, 90s when I, you know, when Rachel and I were on the first on the boards and you, you know, it not really changed that much and we keep just tweaking it. And so I think this is a really an opportunity since we're doing this whole downtown focus, what more do we want? How do we want to change it? And what is more relevant going forward for the next 20 years. You know, the master plan never, ever, and when we were doing the master plan, the two times that I was involved in doing the master plan, the first one and then this renewal, we never talked about climate change. Well, since I was on the planning board in the 80s, our water table has gone up between 18 and 20 inches. And we've done stormwater rags and water is always gonna be a problem for downtown. So, you know, that has to be, you know, somewhat addressed. But if you're doing, you know, the, the form-based zoning, you're putting in green, you can put in filtration devices, you can work with the, your stormwater regs, and, and you can build up a little bit. And so, you know, do, what do we do? And, and so the idea is just to have a little bit of discussion. And as you, and as you have discussion from different parties over a period of six months or so, you sort of get the idea of, you hear everyone's input and then, then you can decide how this comes together. I think no one has an idea at this point. We wanna hear what people have to think, what they think of, and, and what, what, what do we want to go forward with? The, high, the idea is to be creative and get the synergy of ideas, bring them together and come up with what we can all get behind as what, what's the best vision for Deerfield moving forward. And I mean, it might be that we just don't change anything. But on the other hand, I, you know, I feel like we're doing so much and we're coming together to, do, to try to do so much and we're gonna make something happen, no matter what, there's so much energy happening, something is going to happen. Then, so why don't we look at this too, you know, expand out a little bit. And how does this, how does this zoning change support this whole community campus process? Lily, thank you, Carolyn. Um, yeah, so one thing I do want to bring to the table is subsidized housing. Our percentage of subsidized housing makes us vulnerable to unfriendly 40 Bs right now. Our um, Elm Circle subsidized housing is up for renewal in eight years and is potentially at risk. Um, now, again, senior housing has started working on this because senior housing could be denied grants from the state if the town is not seen as supporting subsidized housing beyond just senior housing. So um, I just wanted to, I, I wanted to make sure you all knew that that was happening. I think it's like eight years. Again, Lo, Alyssa LaRose, love that woman. Um, she's already, um, they've already begun having conversations with the new owners. Apparently, the original owners of Elm Circle um, have 
passed away and the, your children have inherited and they're trying to figure out what they want to do with it. So, um, but it, subsidized housing needs to be an important consideration and not just for seniors. And the only other thing I wanted to say is a great place to do a survey is the transfer station because everybody has to get rid of their garbage. <laughs> Place to yes, I think I was um, looking at the summary of the master plan and um, did in fact see that Elm Circle is only 1.5% of our total housing. So even if we get that um, re renewed, we're still woefully behind. Um, other, other thoughts? I mean, certainly there's the question of needing to define what do we mean by upzoning, defining the area we're talking about. We need to formulate some questions, decide who we talk with initially, um, that this will be a process, uh, but that we want to start generating some interest and excitement and buzz about, um, and that we want to sort of maybe uh, steadily make some progress on this, moving toward the fact that we might in fact then need to be um, revising a number of our zoning bylaws, creating overlay districts, whatever. We'll just have to see where it, where it takes us. Uh, what I would like to see, uh, and I know it's, you know, sorry if this is, seems like a silly question, where there are blank lots or empty, empty lots, where there is town owned land that um, has the potential for being developed, I mean, because I'm thinking, okay, it's kind of amorphous. Where are we talking about? And then I thought about, well, when I walk around South Deerfield, there's an empty lot here. There's an empty lot there. Is are those that par parcels? We're not. Are we're not talking about empty. Just we're not talking about empty lots. It's really redevelopment. It's so it's, it's redevelopment. So it, it's near, you know, where um, the pickle factory was. I mean, there's a bunch of open land. Well, we're selling it. <laughs> Okay. Hopefully the deal's going to go through in the week. Oh, okay. <laughs> week or two. Okay. So, so that was, so that's just, as I said, uh, you know, pardon me. If, uh, I'm sorry. Andrea is right though. There is, there's also, there's that uh, barn structure behind that guy's house. There are these weirdo slices of yeah. land all around. You're absolutely right, Andrea. We have identified over 300 acres and it's in a spreadsheet on a public drive. Okay. I remember. Right. And, and but, so that, you know, looking at that and maybe indicating how it's zoned, that could that could be helpful to the process. You know, right. Well, you know, delineating well, the and it may Oxford the Pickle point. Oxford Pickle property is um, our economic development area. So that even though there's blank space there, hopefully we'll be building. You know, we're selling it, and it will be developed for okay. um, jobs. Okay. There you go. So that's helpful information. So if people yes. are looking at that, they, we can say, oh, that's already on yeah. the market right. for private. Development. And that would certainly tie into the whole question of what is the area that we're talking about. Exactly. Right. 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 And I think just if giving it people, as Denise said, defining the area, if we knew what we, you know, what area we were talking about and then could identify, well, this parcel is, you know, going to be for economic development and this parcel is when you go to when you go to renovate, um, if you have supportive zoning, you can do this workforce housing and to qualify for all kinds of grants because of the, um, you know, as a developer, you can get all kinds of grants for, you know, your workforce subsidized housing. And so if you buy an old dilapidated building or the building is just needs to be updated, you can qualify for all these kind of programs because, and so what we want is zoning to support persons going after that kind of grant money. Planning board, how would you think would be a way to move forward? I mean, ourselves, I think we would need to lay some foundation along the lines of the questions that we've talked about here. Um, could this be something that we would be working on maybe June, July, August of the summer that we'd start to start to really try to get our teeth into how we could, mm -hmm. um, which should we start out initially as potentially even just having a, a posted 
planning board meeting of all of us rather than having a few people yeah you know i think i think that's a good idea annalee i my concern is is that is that we're very clear on what we're doing when we speak to people because the problem is is that a whole lot of information misinformation gets out there and people oh, start yes. freaking out and that's the last thing that we want to happen because then all, all of a sudden people have a bad taste in their mouth about the project so i think before we start talking it up to anybody i think we should be very clear on what we're doing well from that standpoint though as we have a um, you know posted public meeting mm -hmm. people would see us grappling with what it is we're talking about. That's fine. If people actually come, then they would see that. <laughs> or maybe people are going to watch this on television. Well, I was hoping you could, it, it's a long process. And so if you just talk about it for the next two or three meetings, then I think we'll know more where the CCI is going. And that will have some impact because all, all the action that we're trying to do, the money is going to be distributed in the next, within the next, I would say, you know, six months. So if in that time period, in the next six months, if we can start the process talking about it, then you can get down to the nitty gritty, determining, determining what we can actually work with for money that we get from the CCI efforts. And then we can figure out how we could be supportive of that. But then also, look forward and say, this is where additional money is coming down, or this is where more money is gone. And we wanna support people being able to, as individuals who are landlords already, how, how do we direct them into funding that is more beneficial to support our shared vision? And I, I think the shared vision is emerging under the CCI. And I think that's the main thing is, because as soon as you talk about workforce subsidized housing, people freak out. And we can't, we can't, we, we've got to be realistic is that we are vulnerable. And that really the senior housing is a fr just really the only way we can get senior housing in town is to do a friendly 40B. The difference between an unfriendly and a hostile 40B is the, you know, you're, it's getting jammed down your throat by a developer who is going to maximize money as much as possible at the expense of the town. A friendly 40B is where you work with the municipality to make it benefit the community. And so this is, you know, we're trying to do senior housing. This is definitely a friendly 40B. Thank you, Carolyn. Yes, Lily. So um, I've, I've been thinking about your question about how how do you all want to move forward as you begin to grapple with this? And um, I was wondering, um, Annalie, I, I shared with you that PowerPoint that I heisted from Northampton that explains great. form based. Yeah. And I thought, though, part of the thing that was helpful to me when I looked at it was that it gave you a new way of thinking about the the looking at the town and that maybe going through that sharing that powerpoint with everyone on the planning board so that it's i i found it personally when i was looking at it as a as a great um got your mind going and and helped me to think differently than from the tables you yeah, know that you guys head. all wrestle with with you know the 87th footnote on cell 2a of that table kind of thing but I, I, I found it, and so I'm wondering if maybe that would be mm -hmm. a helpful Absolutely. Uh, trigger for conversation. And planning board, it, uh, as I just sort of zipped through it, I mean, maybe it took me three or four minutes, and it was exciting. It was really fun to see. Lots of pictures. <laughs> Kathy, as you were looking at the Buckland um, uh, accessory apartments and found that a picture says a thousand words. Um, so I'll, uh, that's a great, uh, great suggestion, Lillian. I'll do that. Well, maybe what we can do is um, I'll share the PowerPoint with um, the planning board. Uh, we'll get through our site plan review in our agenda right now and town meeting and town elections, and then maybe um, have a good working meeting in June or July to um, really start. Hey, just, uh, you just, uh, just going to give it to the planning oh. board. Start figuring some of these questions out. 
Pardon me? That comes in May. Yeah. Yes. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, M.A.? Yeah. M.A., do you have a question? Yes. Um, I wanted, hopefully you will put that on your website besides just sending it out to the planning board? Oh. Okay. Form based. Um, Please. Sure, Jen, Sue, <laughs> we'll get it to you and you can put it out. That would be great. Thank you. Yeah, and, and I, I guess I would also emphasize it's not like we're trying to look like Northampton. Uh, Northampton happened to be the ones who were presenting this concept of uh, form-based. I, I just, right. there are two in mass.gov. There are two examples, if you're, sorry, I was over here on my computer, um, Southfield, Massachusetts, not so far from here, which is a small town, rural, but they were repurposing a, a naval base and they worked with that. And then Lowell, Massachusetts, there are two, two examples oh, on the- Southfield or Southfield? Southfield. Southfield. Yeah, Southfield. yeah, yeah, yeah right it, on the border. Is it Southfield? Okay. Southfield. Southfield. You know, one way to think about it, if you Great think of there. a, if you have a building lot and you have a huge giant Walmart that's right up, right up to the 10 foot setback say okay everything is covered then that's more your conventional this is what you're going to get then your more you know uh friendly zoning would be a little bit cut up but you're still walking by a, a more solidly developed parcel and this form based is you're again you're walking down the sidewalk and you're looking at the lot, there's green space, there's different heights involved, there's different cubbies of space, pocket park kind of space, and, you're, and your whole vision is broken up. And, so, and you go back and you think the Walmart building, and then you think of this, everything broken up. And, and, and so your line of vision is, is, it's more restful and inviting and, yet it accomplishes the same thing. And it accomplishes it by going up and angles and all this kind of stuff. And so it's more human scale than just this giant build out. And right. it's obviously more expensive, but Deerfield is a very desirable, you know, town. And we're trying to, you know, make it really walkable and sociable and doing all this stuff downtown. So, you know, hopefully it'll be momentum building off of this. So the expense of a form-based development would be offset by maybe workforce housing grants or whatever. There, there's just a whole bunch of things you could do. And it, just being creative, I think, is the best way I can think of just to explain it from a simplistic point of view. Right. Or good old, um, frankly, right, form over function mm -hmm. um, that we're looking at what is the form of the structure and our zoning laws care about the form. They don't care about what goes on inside the building. I mean, not totally, but yeah, <laughs> that it's not that our zoning is here's where we're going to do this and here's where we're going to do this and here's where we're going to do this. It's, it's right. Um, that, it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's a little, it's a more, it's just more friendly. It's more inviting. And I feel like it's more future for us because people don't want to leave your community. You want to stay home and, you know, it, and be out with your neighbors and stuff like that. Yeah, that's the whole concept of the yeah. municipal campus, right? All right, good. Thank you. This has been a helpful discussion. I don't believe we have any other business uh, not anticipated 48 hours prior. <laughs> Jen, nothing? No, go ahead. Pardon me? Can I ask a question? Sure. Is there any updates on the um, marijuana facility? I forgot the name. Oh, oh. Ember, Ember, Ember Gardens. Gardens. Thank you. Yeah. You're on the agenda for Wednesday. Oh, okay. Exactly. What does that, because we haven't got our monthly updates that was promised in January. No. Well, I don't really know. I don't have any updates really. Okay. Sorry about that. I I, they're, they're supposed to come. And um, I don't know, Jen, do you know anything? Well, they're, they're supposed to come with a signed document. Basically, they were reviewing, so we're hoping that we'll be moving forward. Oh, is you this have for the host off? community document? Well, they, they were, they're supposed to meet with me on Wednesday also with plans, and for the first time I've really spoke to them, but that, that's the plan for Wednesday also. Okay. 
Um, thank you, thank you, Kathy. Yeah, we can have our pending list, which can include our monthly updates that they were. Good, you know what we can do? We can send you. Um, uh, maybe Jen will just summarize what we are going to do on Wednesday. I, I don't. We don't really have anything to review at the moment. Um, like Bob said, they're meeting with him on Wednesday. So, my, you know, maybe after Wednesday night, if Jen could just send you a like a little summary, maybe a couple sentence summary of what happened. Our monthly update. Yes. But, and, thank yeah. You. That, that's. Thank you. That's better. Right. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I would add that to that list of things, like the the things that the planning board does, and they add that as just <laughs> checking in with all those. You know, just and oh, yes. Bob. Bob has it on his tickle list, but you know, monitoring compliance. Monitoring compliance um, is just ongoing. And, yeah, we've and had a few examples of that this last few months. Um, are there any reports from any committees or seminars or in service education opportunities that people have attended? Every day is an education. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, what I can report um, very briefly on the open space committee, okay. which met this afternoon, right before this meeting. <laughs> um, we continue to review the survey results. And one of the things that we think um, will be an important area of concern is being respectful of the meeting of public and private spaces and how townspeople can use them. For example, one of the committee members lives on the river and often finds that her land has been overrun by people who don't know that her land is private property and being treated very, very badly. So we want to make sure that somehow the um, the respect for people's um, property, both public and private, is understood. For recreation. For, for recreation purposes. For example, yeah. walking across the Comtuck. Who owns what? Where are, uh, where's the public actually welcome? Where is it not? Uh, river access, Simil similarly. So um, that's just an area that we discussed today that we thought was very important. Mm -hmm. Um, Andrew, when might a summary of the survey findings come out? Yes, that is a very good question. Um, we actually talked about how will the survey be used. I am going to be putting with, if I need to, Lily's help, but I hope I don't need, the, um, we have a 100 page <laughs> result of the survey and that will get tossed onto the CCI website. Excellent. We uh, discussed the idea about, um, about a summary of the survey, and it turns out it's very subtle. So if you look at an, uh, one question and you ask, well, how important was this? And if 20% of the people didn't say it, it was very important, it doesn't mean it's not important. It just means it didn't rise to the level of very important. And so we think taken out of context, that will be very confusing. And so I think we're just going to toss up the 100 page mm -hmm. summary for now. A lot of it's pictures, it's, pictures. it's bar graphs. So it's not all just words. It's, it's just, it's tough. There's a because, lot there. I, um, and there, there, you know, the, the, the open space committee will be writing a report and will be having action um, plans to come out of it, but that's not, we're not there yet. I guess I, I'm reflecting on when you spoke to us at our last meeting and you talked about one of the, it seemed like one of the initial findings was the desire to maintain our rural character and preserve our land. And I know there was some discussion about that at uh, one of the other austere member <laughs> boards um, as to, well, how the tension between that and economic development. And so I think the fact that you had as many people responding as you did, it would be really helpful to be able to. Uh, I, I understand, but so, so here's an example. 20% uh, of people said that maintaining uh, forest land was really important, but like 92% said maintaining um, wildlife is important. 
where does the wildlife live? <laughs> the wildlife <laughs> often lives in the forest. So it's confusing. Um, you can't. Right, which is maybe the reason why we need your expertise to uh, to mold it together, because otherwise I can't go through 100. I mean, I'll just say that I won't be. I understand. Questions. I understand. I, I will try to uh, I'll try to figure out a way to highlight well, it's not you. Well, okay, well, good. <laughs> right. Um, and the executive summary is, and that's part yeah. of like, yeah. ultimately, you're going to be interpreting, like you, you do, you have to decide, okay, people don't, you know. We understand, and we're not there yet. I mean, we, we ended up discussing things Our saying, wait, doesn't this, didn't this uh, question completely contradict that question? So it's just, <laughs> um, we're still in the uh, exploring. It is yeah. human nature. Right. We're still in the exploring well, At least you've got some good data points to work with. Cake so for great. breakfast, and I want to lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, see, Jen's good in example. with me. Good example. <laughs> we all got that one. Mayo. <laughs> um, as the planning board saw, we did get our approval from the attorney general of Article 8, which was the municipal town frontage from our October um, 19 or 2021 special town meeting. So that's off the list now for <laughs> pending. Um, we had three pieces of mail that came forward. The Waitley ZBA had a decision on March 6 to allow additional time to reconstruct damaged greenhouses for their indoor cultivation of marijuana. So I imagine read between the lines there, there's some Maybe some vandalism or something. Or wind, wind, rain. Oh, we've had some incredible wind. Oh, bad wind. Uh, bad wind. Branches yeah. all over the place. Yeah. And windows. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah, true. The uh, Shelburne ZBA is having a, spread. well, did have a public hearing yeah, on well, March, yeah. March 17th um, regarding a special permit to add an addition to a non conforming structure and to change a storage area to office space. And then Montague is having their ZBA is having a meeting on March 30th regarding a special permit to construct a detached accessory apartment. So, it, so that's a what, say it again. Because the detached a thing detached is, accessory. So potentially, um, as we've talked about, they have a special permit a possibility for possibility special permitting that it might be. Um, what is it by right in certain districts and special permit in other and districts? Others, right. Right, potentially, or I don't know whatever. if that's the I mean, case but those Montague, are the, all but... the opportunities for, right. because that is, when you're talking about housing production, that was top of the list. And that's why ADUs surface to the top, because that's a yes. relying fruit for creating a higher inventory of lower cost of housing. Housing. All right, um, our next meetings, um, we did pretty much decide that, yes, um, May 9th will be, Fine, because we do have the town election on May 2nd. And um, I think the way things are going now that we'll just have it be hybrid unless um, we make a change otherwise. Uh, but our April next meeting, meeting is, is the 4th. Oh, our, the fourth. Next, our next meeting is April 4th. Right, and that is the continuation of our public hearing and who knows what other right. agenda items might be included. And Otherwise, if there's no further discussion at 10 minutes of oh, time. Sue had a question. Oh. Oops, Sue, Sue. Sue, Sue has a question. Hi, Sue. I just wanted to ask um, all the members that are in town hall if you could sign the A&R, which is beside oh. Denise, before you leave. Oh, brilliant. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Good for you. That's it. That's, thank that's you. the old days. Where is it? It's right there. You right earned your pay, Sue. So. You earned it. Find it. We used to do that all at once. Like, yeah. Ooh, ever nice. since COVID, you so do we it. We shall do that. Can, we're signing. signing the, the, she's starting. Okay. Thanks, Sue. Okay. So. Oh, good good. Yeah. Oh, good. We got that one off the list. Good old days. All right. Uh, so, could I have a motion to? Oh, I move that we adjourn. Thank you. Anybody second. want a second? Second it. Oh, okay. And do we have any um, <laughs> opposition? <laughs> no. All right. Thank you, and thank you to the community members who have attended.